And here we are recording, and this is our, oh my God, it's our 10th episode of Alumni Spotlight by Mark Twain International School. Okay. Hello to everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful Easter vacation and you're preparing to go back to your normal lives and work and school and whatever you're up to in the following week. This is going to be aired on Monday evening, so I hope you all had a wonderful start of the week, and I think we should kick it off today. I'm really, 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 really happy to have our 10th guest, who is Cheyenne Banyasadi, part of the Banyasadi hey. crew of all the Banyasadis we, have at, we had at Mark Twain. <laughs> you guys have to produce more Banyasadi kids that... For sure, that you for sure. Join the family at Mark Twain. Well, uh, you guys are ahead of us, but it's okay. Technically, we have new Armenians at the school currently, so oh, you guys have to. We have two for the moment. Wow. And I think there are going to be more, and one of Now, them is my cousin. Game. Team. Yeah. We need to step up our game, man. Huh? Literally, where the baby's at. <laughs> Don't put the pressure on me, man. Like, my parents are enough. No more pressure. Come on. Okay. Dear parents, if you're watching, leave him alone. Let him be. Let him have his own vibe, speed, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, you realize you're getting gold when we're having conversations like this on an oh, yeah. alumni show hosted by the school. <laughs> I'm not even going I'm not, I'm not to get into that, man. Like, It's okay. We'll just let it slide. Let, let's just let it slide. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to have you today as our 10th guest. Uh, Cheyenne is part of the I mean, class of 2012. Uh, and he graduated entrepreneurship at the University of West Westminster in UK, London. And currently, he's rocking his musical career, and I'm super, super happy to have you as a guest, Cheyenne. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's uh, honestly it was a, it's a pleasure, and uh, like doing it with you, who like we've grown up, like is the best. It's the best feeling. So, whatever you want, let's kick it off. I'm ready. What you got for me? Okay, so we're gonna go through. I don't know if you managed to see part of the previous shows, but if you haven't, we're going to start with a warm-up question related to your MTIS. Uh, yeah, we call it MTIS, although now the school is calling itself for the for the newer generation, Mark Twain IS. We call it MTIS. That's why I casually dropped MTIS, MTIS. for life. MTIS for life, man. Okay. Yeah. OGs. OGs. So, yeah, pretty much... Uh, My first question for you would be, which is one of the dearest memories you hold of from your Mark Twain International School uh, journey, let's say? Honestly, like, like, I know it sounds cliche, like everybody said this, but there are like too many to just pick one. So I'm just gonna go right off the bat and say, definitely when we won the tournament, against the Turkey school. It was hosted by uh, MTIS and uh, me and the, and the guys, like uh, we rocked it and we won the final, we won the cup, we beat everyone. That was definitely a highlight. Um, that's like on a more sporty note, but otherwise there's just too many, man. Like I'm trying to set a good example. So I'm just going to stick with that one. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy someone mentioned uh, sports sports activities that that are taking place at Mark Twain because I sound a little bit biased because I'm the host of the show and most of the stuff I managed to dig up to are related to the artistic sides of the school okay. and it's super funny because like we literally grew up together I, I when did you come to Mark Twain like what a year because I joined in fifth grade he was 2003 Three or 2004. I'm bad with math. Which grade were you in? <laughs> fourth grade. Oh, fourth grade. Uh, that means you you were two years younger than our group. So it means you joined after like yeah, pretty much in the Actually, same. You and Gev, you and Gev are behind my first picture when I came to enroll at the school, 
And it's like you and Gibbs staying there, play, playing with Scott. You remember Scott Tinney? The yeah, music of teacher? course, of course. And he was like pitching a baseball and you guys are literally behind that photo. Okay, I want to see that photo after this call. I'm whenever you, I'm gonna say so for sure, for sure. Please do so. Yeah, I, it it was really really uh, exciting because we've all heard of baseball, but we got to Mark Twain and we actually had baseball breaks, and mm -hmm. that was like next level. I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. We're playing baseball. Yeah, it was so, amazing. So I'm really happy that you shared the the football cup uh yeah like private school cup kind of thing that the school hosted and the, everybody listening should know we were rocking like we had our golden age nobody beat us so just know that be proud and like guys like do something like keep winning titles man yeah no keep pressure the, for the, the younger guys. ones <laughs> exactly let's go yeah pretty much uh i mean it's it's something that i constantly remind because uh a part of the stuff that we managed to succeed to achieve during our educational years were also based on the inner drive that we had. So it yeah. was constantly us having, like being backed up by our teachers, but it was us that we were pushing for more and more things to, to achieve. So everyone who's watching now, we're talking to the younger generations. Yes, your teachers are there and they're doing a wonderful job, but it's also your duty to be, to actually, uh, during one of the opening years at Mark Twain, I was asked to, to like have this small speech moment. And I was like, your teachers are like the wind of your ships. So all you have to do is open up your sails and let them be that wind. But you have to actually work with the wind in order to push forward. So you guys need to engage for sure. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. So now that we 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 got a glimpse of of your memories at Mark Twain, uh, that's not even a glimpse, man. That's like point oh point oh 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 one percent. Like no. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean it's it, it, it's wild because like we we shared so much like as a group of people that were mm -hmm. going to school that it's really really hard just as you said and just like other people have said previously guests on this show it's really hard to actually pick one single memory related to the school because I don't know I feel like we've been marked in the best way by our experience at, at Mark Twain and I'm pretty sure that you like I'm not even going to bother to ask but here I am like how's your relationship with your previous colleagues at Mark Twain oh real good like we have this uh, this whatsapp group and like occasionally like we talk to each other we say happy birthday to each other like we're pretty much involved and like once every while, like we try to manage it when everybody's like in town in Brookhurst and we just meet up and, you know, talk about the, the fun days back at school. Yeah. I, I was yesterday at a barbecue with Joe. So it's literally, this you guys is set the, the bar. I mean, you guys always set the bar. Like we were always like looking up to you guys. So well, we really hope that we we manage to get you guys uh, in a like we tried to set the bar as you said, and I hope that we manage to be at least good or decent examples to oh, to for follow. Sure, for sure. Yeah, we're super happy to hear that. So mm -hmm. I've seen that you studied entrepreneurship. So. And I know that you currently are engaged in the musical field, mm -hmm. but before we get to that part, uh, like when did it click, like click with you? Like when did you realize that you actually want to study entrepreneurship? Well, I mean, like this, I think could be divided in like two uh, categories. Uh, first of all, I think I've always had this innate ability to create opportunities for myself and like, you know, make a buck or two, like whenever I could, like ever since I was like, maybe like 10 years old. Uh, I'm not saying anything happened on school ground. I'm not saying this, <laughs> but all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that like the, the whole uh, culture at the school, like was proactive for us, for instance, like, like for me, at least, like when I saw an opportunity for something, I will say Yu-Gi-Oh cards and I'm going to leave it at that. 
Like it was a huge wave. There was huge demand. And all I'm saying kids, when there's demand, try to supply. That's all I'm saying. Um, and aside from this, uh, there's this whole, obviously like the whole family part that like most people, like there are a lot of people, I can't say most that go through it. For instance, when like your parents expect things from you, you have, for instance, to take over like family businesses or like, you know, they need you to do something. And the safest and most logical choice would be like, obviously do something in the business field to get hired and do something. But hopefully like when I get into this and expand it a bit further, I'm not saying if it's right or wrong, but uh, to not go too far away from your question, I think that's pretty much what it was. Like it was uh, the way I was, you know, I grew up uh, and the expectations that uh, my parents had for me. And at the same time, I also had a knack for it. So when I decided to go to uni, I was like, okay, I don't want to study like business management, like everyone. So I studied and I researched and I found that like entrepreneurship, it's something that suits my skills uh fairly good and uh it was it was it was a really good course and i loved it like it was really engaging and it was more about practical things rather than theoretical things which i loved Mm -hmm. yeah it's funny that you mentioned the family part because i I feel like at least the whole uh starting your own thing taking over the family businesses uh and always being engaged with the whole family business concept from a from a kid like from a super young age, I feel mm-hmm. like that's like that's a standard way of ABCs of how to be an immigrant family's kid abroad. Because <laughs> I yeah, feel like sure. it, it's yeah. the same in our family. And like a, a part of the things that you mentioned, I can super relate to that. And, and it's funny because uh, starting from that point of like the family businesses and everything that you've mentioned, uh you manage to run away from the standard expectations of being like following the businessman trait and now you got into the artistic field so that 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 hits home for me so so that's why i wanted to highlight uh that part uh and i usually ask this this questions of like how you got to actually discover what you want to do because I know there are a lot of uh, youngsters watching from Mark Twain and not only that probably are considering different traits and different choices for their educational careers. So obviously after they graduate high school. So it's really important to actually get to share some of these things with them. So when they get to make a choice for the university, they can actually I mean, we've all been to Mark Twain, so sometimes it feels more safer uh, or more relatable when you hear it from someone that has been in your own shoes in the same school and so on and so forth. Uh, Also, you mentioned the university and it's really important because obviously for a lot of people, UK is pretty tempting option when it comes to choosing the university to attend. Uh, so it, it would be really helpful to share with us a glimpse of what it's like to be a student at Westminster in, in London from, from a more complex point of view, okay. from experience-wise. I would say like University of Westminster was like uh, really good, for instance, for me, because I'm a very social person. and. Mm-hmm. It's like literally the campus that I was studying at, it was like in front of Baker Street Station, which is like one of the most famous stations there, like Sherlock Holmes and everything is like really close to Central. Um, And the mixture of people going there was like really high, like the, the, um, the cultural diversity was high. And for me, that was a great thing because coming from MTIS, uh, it was pretty familiar for me. And Mm -hmm. when I went there, I didn't feel like I'm going to okay, uh, uh, university in London where I'm going to be surrounded by British people, you know? Uh, Mm -hmm. Being surrounded by, like, people from a lot of cultures and diversities, I managed to learn a lot of things from them. It might sound cliche, but uh, always, like, try to get to know people around you. You never know what you can learn from anyone. And um, aside from this, the university was, like, really cool, but I can speak only from my own course. Mm -hmm. Um, They pretty much had everything. Like, when you go there you're good. Like I would personally recommend it. Um, you have access to a lot of, uh, a lot of faculty stuff. Uh, 
what else can I say? Like, it's, it's really good. Like if people are trying to see and it's an option for someone, I've been there, done that. So it's a good choice and you're going to feel pretty comfortable there and you're going to definitely be able to make friends. Okay. Well, yeah. that's, that's pretty cool. Last episode, I, I had Ines uh, as a guest and she was talking about her experience in Switzerland. So now we're back to UK. We've had a lot of people from the UK on this show. So. Wow. I, 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 wow. How? <laughs> Total <laughs> shocker. Yeah. Well, I'm here to represent studying in Bucharest. So I'm representing Romania. So okay. I see you. I see you. Okay. Also, I didn't uh, get to ask, did you finish the IB program or you yeah. took the, the national? Oh, IB, okay. IB, IB. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, I don't know if we should get into details, but uh, it, it, it's really hard to 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 not at least put a minor spotlight on, on the process. Well, I'm, I'm going to fade this. I think this will pretty much help everyone. Um, the whole IB program is really, really, really well suited for what you're going to see when you go at university. So it prepares you, I think, in the best way possible because the whole grading system the whole like everything you need to do it's very very similar for a lot of people that were studying there and they didn't go through the ib program for them like having an assignment like to write like i don't know two thousand words or something there was like oh my god like how is this possible like it's so difficult and like we've been doing this for two years now it was really easy and the whole point of it was that i felt like okay it was a more a broader uh ib program that's it. Like with more stuff to do and more focused on the direction you wanted to go. So yeah. IB program, definitely props. Go for it. Yeah. And I, I hope at one point I'm literally going to forward this show to the IB official page. And I'm like, guys, can you hear what we're <clears throat> talking about? Like literally we're here to like, it, it sounds like we're literally being paid to talk about this, but it's really, really hard to separate your your high school experience from the whole IB program because it literally like we've seen when we get to university and you're being exposed to things which you're mm -hmm. not supposed to not like what you're not supposed to but uh, you haven't seen or done before but once you go through IB um, I'm like we've seen a lot of struggle and getting to do things in a super short amount of time yeah. and like shifting from the standard way of approaching education. And I, I feel like IB has definitely done that for, for all of us. I agree hundred percent. So, so I'm happy that we, we, we share the same, same opinion when it came to, when it comes to the whole IB process. Uh, what did you miss the most when you, besides family and friends, when you went yeah, to sure. study to in, in London? Are there people that say like family and friends? Yeah, literally. I, I mean, it's it's Come on. it's really hard to to not mention. I mean, because for us, like most of us, when we were in high school, we literally like I remember that that the vast majority of my like my social life was based on my relationship with my my high school friends. So it was okay. a really, it was a huge step because it, it was like a comfort okay. zone. It was like a safety net for all of us. So pretty much besides that, what did you miss the most? Okay. Uh, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. So I'm speaking as me. I'm not saying like this should be the standard, but like I always looked forward to new things. So mm -hmm. I was really looking forward to close the chapter on Romania and okay. move on and start a new chapter there in London. Uh, the things that I missed the most, definitely KFC Romania and <laughs> McDonald's and Dristo Budapest, 100%. 100%. Like no okay. cap, that's it. Okay, so you're a foodie. <laughs> I am a junk foodie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I well, that was an unexpected answer. So I was honest. You guys went honest, right? I told you I'm gonna be 100% honest. I'm totally fine with that. I mean, oh yeah. I, okay, one more thing: the clubs, the clubs in Romania, way better than the clubs in London. 
Okay, so th this was for all the high schoolers that are watching this episode of. Oh, yes. Yeah. So when you're going to be 18, when you're going to be 18 and you're going to actually go to a club in Romania, you're going to see that it's way better than the clubs in London. <laughs> yeah. So it's really hard to not talk about our social lives, especially when you're going to university. Like after you are done with university, things get pretty serious. So if you have the time and you definitely have the energy during your university years, make sure to professionally balance your study life with the social life here. <laughs> have a balance. Have a balance, yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah, balance is the key to... to All things everything pretty much so technically speaking my next question is is like like i'm trying to evolve from your university from high school to university so it would be really expected of me to ask how did you manage how did it got to the point where you decided to transition from the whole entrepreneurship vibe to music um okay this is a bit broader and um i'm gonna try to go and like talk about it really focused uh so we don't like waste too much time on it uh, i think it's one of the most important things and i hope like everybody who's listening to just stop whatever they're doing and like focus on what i'm about to say right now because i would have wished for someone to play this for me when i was like in high school back then mm -hmm. and to tell me what I'm about to tell you now. Um, first of all, uh, I finished entrepreneurship. I'm really good at what I do, like business wise. I've always had a knack for it. Uh, I have certain qualities that like help me to, uh, to be really good at what I do. Once I finished and graduated, I came back here. I worked uh, in one of our companies here in Romania as the sales director. So, okay, this is a blessing. I understand this, but uh, at the same time I was working my ass off. So coming here, I grinded for three years. Uh, I was making a good amount of money. I had a good car, a good house, and pretty much for everybody, for most people, when you think about like success at a young age, pretty much that's what you want. You want financial freedom. You want to have like uh, material things. But at the same time, the most and most important thing is this. What makes you happy, guys? Like, are you happy? Ask yourself this question in whatever you do, like, am I happy right now? Because you're gonna see at some point that it's not about how much money you have in your pocket or like what car you're driving or where do you live. It's about if you're feeling at peace and you're happy. So after three years, I was like, okay, I'm having the dream life of like most people, but I wasn't happy. And that can transition into certain things uh, from anxiety to panic attacks and things that like, people at a young age nowadays like I know they go through it even in high school so um, be sure to ask for help if you need it uh, hopefully I had a really good uh, mental me mechanism of my own which helped me realize that like while I was doing uh, like I was working here in Romania after graduation I've always had a knack for music because I was playing guitar ever since I was in high school uh, so I started going you know more into like music and uh, I realized that like it brings me happiness so whenever I was feeling like anxious or whatever like I was doing music I was feeling good and happy and this escalated and escalated and at some point I uh, I had a family conference with my uh, with my parents and my sister and I told them like look guys in it was like August of like 2018 I was like okay in December I'm like giving you all my folders I'm going to finish all my project I'm moving to LA I'm going to pursue music like I made a decision, snap, that was it. Um, this whole thing was based on a decision that would make me happy because I wanted the rest of my life to be like this. Sleep, like put my head on the pillow happy, wake up happy because there's absolutely nothing more important in life than happiness. So always aim to be happy and do anything that makes you happy. Try to find what your passion is. Like what is it that you want to wake up and do until the night without feeling that you're working because that's exactly what you should be doing in your life we all have one life i'm saying the yolo stuff okay but there's literally one life and when you waste it you're going to regret it a lot later on because what's the point of like being alive and like living one life and you keep doing this 
okay, uh, graduate, get a job, get married, have kids. Routine. Get some loans. Like this whole routine and cycle that has been set by society should be challenged. In school, I'm sure MTI is like encourages this because as they encouraged us, like always try to challenge even your teacher's point of view, try to be inquisitive and ask why, why, why? Because it's not always like set in stone. Like people not smarter than like me or you have made these things a thing. Like this mm -hmm. is the normal because someone a few years back thought, okay, this should, this is what society should be like. You can create a new society. You can create new things, but I'm not going to go too much into that. So all I'm saying is like, find what makes you happy, have the courage to pursue that. And trust me, you're going to have anything and everything you always wanted because money should never be your main goal and main chase. If you try to choose one field that you love and makes you happy, try to be the best at it. Cause if you don't have this drive, then it's not something that you actually love. So whatever you choose, choose something that you love, try to do the best in the world at it. And trust me, money, material things, all these things are going to just come along when you do it. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I will slow clap for me and like my computer just got blue screen because <laughs> like I, I I don't know how busy probably you've been super busy but but if you manage to see at least a part of the episodes of, of the show you will see that this is literally what I with most of our guests have been preaching like it's super, super, like, especially the whole mental health part is, mm -hmm. we actually had a, a, one of our episodes was pretty oriented towards actually finding your inner joy and mm -hmm. being comfortable to accept that you are not uh, in it to satisfy the masses. And right. that at the end of the day, even if you've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money, others have invested a lot of time, energy, and hopes in something that you right. are supposed to achieve. It's always more than fine to be able to let go because you realize that's not making you happy. And Correct. and I like I I wish you would have you would have got this uh, this epiphany of yours when you were much younger at Mark Twain and uh, probably you would have had much more fun uh, from the whole optional courses point of view. Cause like literally what you have said has, cause I like, I, I relate to a lot of the things that you, you said, cause yeah, I come from a family that has a lot of similarities and expectations and demands. Although it's all wrapped up in in a lot of love because they expect all those things because they want the best for me as yeah. they as your family wanted the best 100%. for you but at the end of the day sometimes what's the best for us is not the same best that's being seen by our parents and it takes a lot of courage to actually start swimming against the the this huge society imposed wave that we're dealing with so so I'm really, 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 really happy that, that you got there. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm like glad to speak with like like-minded people always. Uh, one thing I wanted to add is this. Um, it's not, it's not something you should panic about. So if you guys don't know what you want to do right now in this moment, like you have to choose a university or like a major, the most important thing is to just move forward. Like keep moving, keep moving. Don't mm -hmm. stop ever. And for instance, for me, I actually thought about it a lot and I would have never wanted for me to actually realize this when I was in high school because every, everything that I have right now and all the qualities that I gained along the way by going in the wrong path, for instance, not necessarily the wrong path, but like a path that wasn't necessarily for me, uh, because I learned of the... a lot of things. I had a lot of skills mm -hmm. that I gained that are like coming full circle now and helping me in what I love. Mm -hmm. So everything happens for a reason just like trust the process and be brave guys like be brave like i'm from the my class in mtis was called brave so i don't know if like that has anything to do with it but like you guys have to be bold and be brave and have the courage to do what you love no matter what your parents say what 
like I, I'm not trying to incite anything, but I'm saying what you love, it's your life. You have to decide what is it that makes you happy. Nobody yeah. can tell you what makes you happy. Only you can decide what makes you happy. So go with it. Uh, yeah, I 1000% agree with what you said. And yeah, it's funny because your class was called the Braves and yeah. we were called the Owls. So uh, from our point of view, just be also wise like an owl. And, and sometimes it's good to jump with your head ahead but also be always super wise and and also analyze other people's journeys to learn from always. other people's mistakes always. although mm -hmm. yes your own will mistakes will probably teach you the best ever lessons but also the key is to be smart and wise enough to to not go, at least not go through all the mistakes that someone's supposed to make during their journey I mean, like Nobody's forced to do this, but if you guys do this, like what Han, what Han just said, you guys are going to be ahead. So you're yeah. going to win a lot of things and you're going to save a lot of time by not doing a mistake, which someone already like been, been there, done that. Just don't do it. Like if you feel like you need to make the mistake on your own skin, I respect that. There are a lot of people who like to think like that. I need to feel it on my own skin, but smart thing is to learn from others' mistakes and, you know, gain something yeah. and just moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. And yeah, like why I mentioned, cause I totally relate with the parts in which you mentioned that everything happens for a reason. Uh, everything takes time for a reason. You never know the struggles that you have been through to discover your, your inner, inner self. you like, you don't know why things are happening. And I totally agree. You have to constantly be pushing, never beat yourself down. It's it's really important to have goals, but whenever you feel like you failed at achieving a goal, you have already won by just going through the entire race to get there. So the process is super, super important, but it's don't beat yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was saying that uh, it's, it's like, I'm super happy that you got to to actually understand all this, this parts of yourself that you probably kept hidden from yourself or maybe you didn't wanna embrace from a younger age. But I was mentioning like, like I you know feel why? like, what? Do you know why? Do you know why? Like, like for instance, for me, mm -hmm. I've always dabbled with music. It was ever since I was in high school. And I think deep down, like if I'm being really honest with myself, I've always wanted to be on a stage and sing in front of like 50,000 people. But when you're in high school and you have Pressure. society, standards, Pressure. family, like it's like it's a non-starter. Like you think about it like, come on, I can't do music. Like what? I have to do business. I have to do whatever IT or like. No, you have to do what makes you happy. If business makes you happy, do business. If you want to be a photographer, be a photographer, but like be the best photographer you can be. You want to be a gardener? Again, respect. Be the best gardener you can be. And trust me, if you become the best gardener in the world, you're going to probably be one of the richest gardeners in the world who's going to make probably upwards of like, I don't know, maybe $100 million a year. So money comes when you excel at whatever you choose. It can yeah. be anything, not necessarily business. So if money is your goal, choose something that makes you happy. So at least if you work every day, you don't go nine to five to some place that you feel like miserable and like, oh my God, I have to go back to work again. It's Monday. So it makes you look forward to it because for me, now I work probably like, I don't know, 14, 15 hours a day. And I don't feel like I'm working. Like it's supposed to, but I'm doing music and, I'm, mm -hmm. and I love what I do. So for me, like 14 hours a day of like working and trust me, like music is not all fun and games when you see a final product. Like there's no. so much engineering and like work behind it. And it gets you tired, but like when it is something that you love, you don't feel anything. And trust me, when you're going to grow up and you're going to get a job, you're going to wish that you chose something that you love, because if you don't love something and you have to be there nine to five, you're going to start feeling miserable and rethink the choices in your life. So don't do that. Choose what you love from the start. Yeah. And, and it's re really important that you mentioned the whole high school trends, uh, society, uh, what your friends are saying, what your family saying. And also like, I wanna put a spotlight on, cause we're at alumni spotlight. I wanna highlight the fact that also there is like this standardized expectations of what boys 
slash men are supposed to do in high mm -hmm. school and not only in high school. So I totally understand uh, also the pressure of being a young boy in high school that wanted to do music and artistic stuff when mm -hmm. the general vibe for boys during high school years was mainly oriented towards sports, to, to, to more, let's say, society imposed super manly activities. So I totally understand why you're, there was a part of you that was holding yourself back from actually being vulnerable. Because I feel like it's absolutely impossible to pursue any career in arts without let, letting yourself be vulnerable. Because that's- be Obviously, obviously. Yeah. Just be, have, have the courage to do it. Like, if you choose something, go for it. Like, no mm -hmm. backups, no nothing, just do it. Yeah. So yeah. that that's why I was mentioning that I that I, that I'm that I feel bad that you didn't get to fully let yourself free during. Oh, trust that, me, those... it's okay. Like I'm everything happens for a reason, man. Like the good, the bad, not like if you're in a good place in your life right now, it's not because of the sum of all the good things that happened to you. Mm -hmm. If you're in a good place right now, it's the sum of the bad things and the good things. So it's always, and even if you're in a bad place, it's not always because of the bad things that happen. So it's the good things and the bad. So there's always a balance. If bad things happen today, they could turn into a positive three years from now or three weeks mm -hmm. from now. So just go with it, embrace. Don't let anything like affect you. Keep moving forward, keep moving forward. That's That should be the mentality. Yeah, I keep on saying that because like if it were for me, I would have literally been one of the one of the crazy people that would have insisted the school to be open on Saturdays and Sundays so I can have more optional courses to attend because there were only five days and I had all five days full and I was I would have fought you on that. I would have fought you on that. I'm I'm saying this guys, like I really don't like studying. That's me. You I said optional courses. <laughs> Uh, that's all I'm saying. All I'm saying, like, <laughs> trust me, like, some people love studying. Some people are really good at it. Some people don't like it. So it's okay either way. Try to do your best and gain as much information as you can. Yeah. But definitely don't go to school on Saturdays and Sundays. My opinion. <laughs> no, I wasn't saying that. I said optional courses. Optional courses weren't courses. They were a treat for us because, like, I was going to drama, I was going to, we had choir, we had dances, we had guitar courses, we had even sports, we had Aikido, I was, I was doing that. What? Football, Aikido. We, yeah, you had body. football, and, but like, I, I was like, at one point, I was literally, it was the beginning of the year, and I was running after the teachers who were arranging the schedule for the optional courses. And I was trying to make sure that none of my favorite optionals overlap each other during a week. I was like, I don't know what you guys are gonna do, but I don't want drama and music to be on the same day because mm -hmm. I can't choose between any of those. <laughs> so that's that's why we can seem like, hmm, can we put a course on Saturday? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no weekend school, only for fun. So yes. now that we talked about your your uh, your inner journey towards your musical career, yep. my question would be: What's in the cards for the following for those who follow your musical journey? Because I, I I did my job, and besides that, I've been also following on social media the stuff that you put out. Mm -hmm. uh, I really really enjoyed your last cover of Billie Eilish, "Everything I Wanted." Cause, Thank you. Because I feel like whatever she's doing, she's doing really good. Like she found, and it's and it's really like you managed to take that song of hers, and you kept the essence of keeping it super chill. And it's really mm -hmm. interesting that you talked about your own journey towards finding your happiness. And I feel like that's that's what the song is about, because mm -hmm. it's about everything I wanted. And, and it, it, it was really interesting, like you were explaining your whole, whole process 
and uh, and, and then that was the last song you put out, and it, it was it was really really interesting because yeah, I mean, I've, never, I've never actually thought about it like that, but you're right. The, like my brain was making the connections. I'm like, oh, he's talking about the journey, and it's funny that the last song, which is the cover of the song, is actually talking about this journey of finding your own happiness, and yeah, so. I know you have eight songs out currently. Yep. Your latest chapter one. one. Is, what? That was chapter one. Yeah. So, is there an album that's being in, um, in the I cooking can't process? Think about albums, like right now, I'm not focused on albums. I'm stockpiling a lot of songs. I've been working on a lot of projects that I'm going to drop in the second part of this year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the first songs that I released were just basically my musical journey and the search of myself as an artist mm -hmm. and my sound, sonically speaking. Uh, and what's the direction I want to be like? Who am I as an artist? Um, the direction that I'm going in now after finding myself, it's something like on a completely another level. Um, like, I mean, I'm going to win a Grammy in a couple of years, so I need to step up my game. And... Uh, the things that I'm going to put out now, they're just like flames. So all I'm saying is like mm -hmm. anybody, if you like music or like, if you like your talent, talented or like something, hit me up. I'm always open to, to help and to guide other people. Um, but all I'm saying like for you, for instance, that you're following me on social media, it's like, keep posted. Like I haven't been teasing any new music, but I have, I've never had as much music as I do right now. And I'm, when I'm going to open that, box is just gonna come flowing out like i form my own team a lot of futures coming out um <clears throat> exciting stuff man exciting stuff i'm super super happy to hear that and like yeah club and super upbeat stuff is great but mm -hmm. if what you produce has anything of the emotional vibe of your latest cover cover of Billie Eilish so if there is also soul in what you're gonna produce mm -hmm. and launch soon I'm more than excited to it's to... basically a mixture of like R&B hip-hop soul like all of it mixed mm -hmm. together and with my own touch to it so mm -hmm. obviously like when you're gonna hear for instance my next songs you're gonna be like okay so it's it's that guy it's that song so and it's normal like for any artist like if there's anybody, any one of you listening now who's doing music, um, just trust the process and find yourself as an artist and try mm -hmm. to be you, because <clears throat> everybody tries to be like the next, this guy, the next that, guy. Yeah. exactly. So try to be the next you and the best you can be. And when you do that, trust me, the music sonically is gonna boom. It's gonna be completely different. So, yeah. 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 That's 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 pretty pretty cool. So we're all looking for your MTIS family is looking forward to to bomb that Spotify playlist out of it. Let's go, that's, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we're li really looking forward forward to that. And and pretty much uh, technically speaking, these were my questions. So okay. uh, my my closing pitch towards you my request would be what are your if although I feel like everything you've said feels like a, a basket of advice you freely the freebies you offered to to our followers but if there's anything you want to let our future alumni know before we we call it a, a day yes <clears throat> um try to learn the true value of everything around you. Like the actual real prices of everything. And realize one thing, like material happiness is temporary happiness. And there's another thing called real happiness. So always try to look for real happiness. When you buy a new car, you buy a Ferrari, let's say, there's a chemical reaction in your brain. It releases serotonin, which makes you happy. You guys should have studied, you know, chemistry by now and you should know um all this when it happens it makes you feel happy for a while but like when you get the car after like a couple of weeks you're like okay it was cool what's next you know but at the same time if you allow yourself to actually see what's around you and appreciate 
the bond that you have with your brothers and sisters, your parents, the love that you have for nature, the love that you have for music, for whatever that makes you happy. And you actually allow that to get inside you and make you as happy as you can be the same amount of serotonin equal to the amount of serotonin you release in your brain for buying a Ferrari you could have by just looking at a flower. So this might sound a bit complex for you guys right now, but like when you go through life, just remember this, there's temporary happiness and real happiness. Temporary happiness wears off real quick and leaves you with a sour taste after, but real happiness like sticks around and it's healthy and it helps you grow and it's really good for you. So protect your energy. Um, always be wary of other people who want to just drain you of your energy and like get into that vibe and just, yeah, just be yourself guys. Like be yourself and try to be as happy as you can with yourself and just love yourself the way you are. That's yeah. it. And trust me, I'm speaking as one of the cool guys. There's nobody cooler than me. Like you guys should follow me on Instagram and see like the life that I'm living. Like I'm the cool guy that is telling you this. So if you guys think you're cool or like you're this and that, like, yo, I am cool. So if I'm telling you this, then this is it. Don't look for another people. Like I'm not there. I, I really don't like studying. That's just not my thing. I do music. I'm happy. All I'm saying, pursue what makes you happy. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Well, to, to filter the ending of what I answered, it's not like he doesn't like studying. It's he likes studying things that make him happy. Exactly. A hundred percent. Like music at MTIS was one of the best things that I did. I've learned a lot of things and that was definitely one of the foundations that set me up to actually pursue it even further. So definitely make sure to pick things that make you happy and don't be afraid to go into that and like see what your potential could be. Because when you like something guys, you could basically do anything in that field because you will do any sacrifice. You will study as much time as you need for it. Like just go with it, go with it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I totally subscribe to what you said. Uh, having my own ar artistic background of educational choices, so I, I can totally relate to that. And what we've already been preaching at this show is that whenever you love something and you love a trait that you have chosen for your life, you won't feel like you're working. And whenever you feel like money isn't following, money will follow as as long as you stick Always. to it and you Always. you do it with passion, it's literally impossible. Whatever you're choosing to I can do. guarantee this, guys. Like, I am a living example. I started off doing music with zero money. My parents were not supporting my move. So I started with squat. And now I'm way better off than I was while I was working. So doing what you love and being good at it and keep improving at what you do brings the material things to you. And on a final note, guys, just be brave enough to go and conquer the world. Like you should aim and go and get as much as possible in this one life that you have, because it's not worth living in one place and doing small things like go with it and get as much as you can think, get everything you can get, conquer the world. Like if you think about something, think on a global scale and just go from there. Yeah. It, it, it's funny because you said that and like one of those quotes that we I, I have constantly been hearing at Mark Twain I think it was something among the lines of aim for the sun and if you don't shoot for the sun you're probably going to end up on a star so that's yeah but nonetheless go for the sun you have one life it's better to be at the end of your life knowing that you always aim for the sun you know and, you know, there's a lot of people that go and get the sun and they even go further. So why? That person can be you. Nobody has anything more or less than you. You yeah. are the you that you're supposed to be. And there's definitely something for each and every one of you out there. You just have to be brave enough to look inside you to look for the answers because the answer is not out there. It's inside you. I'm telling you, you already know what it is that you love and what it is that you actually want to do. So just be brave enough to follow that. Brave and stubborn. Stick to exactly. what makes you happy. Guys, consistency, persistency, all of these things are keys to doing whatever you want. Because if consistency meets persistence, it's just like impossible to not do what it is, whatever it is that you want. All the sustenances, they're good. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Like I was like, <laughs> like <laughs> stick to the sustenances. 
yeah. everything that gives you consistency. So, patience. So, yeah. So pretty much this is what we had in store for this 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 first week of school at Mark Twain because you're probably back to school now by by holidays, and you're Monday. heading up to to the to the, to the second term of your educational journey of this second season of the pandemic reality so whatever you're doing just give a tap on your own shoulder for what you've achieved till now and 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 keep on rocking and don't stop and enjoy your journey that's something really really important enjoy the process and and i don't know just love what you're doing and and just stick to it. And I'm really happy that uh, today I had Cheyenne as our guest to to, it was a pleasure, to man. It preach was a pleasure. his Thanks point of view. Me. And everything you've said was super valuable. And I hope as many kids as possible will get to watch this. And not only kids, adults too, because you're never too old to start over or 100%. to pursue your your dreams. So 100%. whoever you are, dear follower, I hope this, this message gets to your soul and gets to tickle that one cell that's pushing for you to make a change in your life. And, and I really hope that what we got to share with you today will, will, will be the boost that you, your, your ego, your brain, your heart, your soul needed to kick off this week in a, in a super positive vibe. So once again, thank you, Shan, for, for being our guest. I thank hope you, uh, thank you. you were as, as happy as I and our followers were to, to, to share this journey uh, with us. And uh, we're, we're super looking forward to, to your future uh, music that's going to be out. Thank and we're, we're looking forward to, to sharing and going after that uh, repeat button on, on the Spotify playlist. Thank you. I appreciate it. Every play counts. Thank you. Thank you. And pretty much this is our 10th episode. I hope you all have a wonderful evening because by the time this gets aired, it's going to be evening. Have a wonderful week ahead. We're saying our wholehearted hellos to all our friends, colleagues, students, teachers, principals, and we're going to see each other probably next week. So take care and have a great night. And thank you again, Sharon, for joining. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Okay. So we're out. Take care.